The Christian Watson breakout game finally happened. How does that change his dynasty value going forward? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Today's episode of Locked On Dynasty is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Welcome into the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, everybody. I am Kate Majuk. You could follow me on Twitter at FFBallBlast. And as always, I am joined by my good friend, Marcus Mosier. You could follow him at Sad Cowboys Friend. Uh, sorry, Marcus. I, I mean, under uh, at Marcus underscore Mosier. Is that? I, yeah, sure. I always get confused with your Twitter handle these days. I, I'm just so depressed right now. That, let me just let me just say that it's just you need to cheer me up because this is a it's a tough time to be at Marcus underscore Mosier. I do have some good news for you, Marcus. As you alluded to in our intro here, your call last week. You said that Christian Watson was the start of the week, and you were unfortunately correct, though it was at the uh, the the sadness of your Dallas Cowboys. So I'm so sorry about that, but let's talk about Christian Watson who Mm -hmm. had an absolute breakout day. We actually saw a little bit of life out of Aaron Rodgers, Uh, but I mean, Christian Watson absolutely dominated four catches, three touchdowns. Now the question for me is, is this a fluke? Is it not a fluke? We don't, uh, I always hate to put stock in a guy that had three of his four receptions go for a touchdown, but did play a season high 84% of snaps in week 10, uh, 107 yards. He looked good. I saw eight targets. Mm -hmm. Uh, Give me your thoughts on long-term Christian Watson, because I'm not looking to uh, go out and trade for him. This might be the week that I I I sell just a couple of the shares that I own uh, because I don't know if we can count on this week to week. All right. So I'm going to really try to do this all without sounding bitter or jealous or whatever the word that you want to use is. But one of the reasons why, Kate, that I thought he was the play of the week was because of how the last two weeks played out. They played the Bills on Sunday Night Football, and the first two passes of the game went his way, and then he got knocked out of the game with a concussion. concussion. And um, Matt LaFleur, after the game, said it really changed our game plan because we were going to feature him a ton in that game. And then they had to switch everything up Uh, against the Lions last week. Very first play of the game, he gets targeted, gets hit in like the upper chest area. And because he was in the concussion protocol last week, they decided to yank him. And again, the Packers offense really struggled without him. He is exactly what this offense has been missing. Somebody that can stretch the field, that can beat one-on-one coverage. And Kate, you mentioned the stats, four catches, 107 yards, and three touchdowns. It could have been an even bigger day. Aaron Rodgers had a pass down to him in the end zone that was just perfect, and he didn't see the ball. Whether he didn't think the ball was coming to him or what, he just didn't see him. Like This easily could have been a four-touchdown, 160-yard day. I don't think it's a fluke. But I also don't think you could trade for him right now because of the way dynasty owners that have him that have been waiting this long for the breakout aren't suddenly going to ship him for what his price is, right? You're going to have to pay so much far and beyond what his value is to get him. I think we're in a weird window where Christian Watson is almost untradeable or ungettable right now. All right. So you who uh, you're not believing that this is a fluke. So what are you willing to send? So say like there's no weird trade limbo. What are you willing to offer for Christian Watson after this kind of game? Well, let's right now on dynasty league football, he's being ranked as wide receiver 46. That's way too low, right? There's guys like Brandon cooks, chase Claypool, Alex Pierce, sky Moore, all those guys. I, I would take Watson over them. It's tough when you get into the George Pickens, Cortland Sutton, Amari Cooper range, 
But that's probably where we could start having a conversation about it. But there's just no way if you have if you have uh, Christian Watson, you're not trading him for Amari Cooper, right? You're, you're just not because of the age difference, because of the offense. If you have Christian Watson, you're not trading him from Cortland Sutton. I mean, look, look how bad that Denver offense looked yesterday. You're going to have to probably give up a top 20 receiver to do that. And I'm just, I'm not willing to do that. I mean, I, I think that's fair. Christian Watson in the most recent dynasty ADP batch over at dynasty league football wide receiver 58. So going behind some guys like Josh Palmer, Michael Gallup, like I, I do think that's a, a trade I'm willing to make here Um, in terms of recent trades. uh, Cole Komet for Christian Watson. I have to imagine that's probably a tight end premium league. I'll, uh, I'll take Christian Watson here. Uh, Christian Watson for James Conner. I'll take Christian Watson. Okay. I'm not super high, but I do. Uh, I, again, I've had the concerns with Christian Watson that I think he's he's kind of a volatile athlete. Absolutely. And yeah. like that, that's where you're banking on him is his athleticism, which obviously, at, as long as he's healthy, you can bank on that. That's fantastic. But. My question for Christian Watson comes on how ready is he to be a consistent pro-level wide receiver? He's a rookie. He's got plenty of time to go. But I think, you know, this is a You're betting on upside here, right? Like, you know that there's going to be weeks where you start him and he's two for 24 and basically does nothing. But this type of game, much like Chase Claypool as a rookie, is going to keep his value – so high. Remember that game against the Eagles where Claypool scored four touchdowns or whatever, and it just instantly shot up his dynasty stock. I think Watson, th- this one for Watson is going to do the same. Yeah, I, I think that's a hundred. That's a very good comp, Marcus. Actually, because I, I think a lot of the concerns that we've had about Chase Claypool in the past are the concerns that I have about Christian Watson. Yes. Phenomenal athlete, excellent traits. Does he have the the actual skill set as a wide receiver to be a true alpha wide receiver one i don't know just yet and that's that's a lot of the concerns we had coming out of the gate uh for chase claypool and it didn't pan out so tbd uh tbd on that uh let's talk about uh, another winner let's let's do it after this uh the sponsor kate which by the way you and i are absolutely gonna love this is a new one uh, this holiday season, find what you love at Total Wine and more with so many great bottles to choose from. It's easy to find a new favorite single barrel bourbon or the perfect gift for everyone on your list with some help from a friendly guide and with the confidence of knowing you found something special for the absolute lowest price. Find what you love, love what you find only at Total Wine and more. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most states. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly. B21. All right, Kate. More winners. More winners. We got to talk about Elijah Mitchell, Marcus. Yes. What is going on? The 49ers. I'm just so sick. So sick of Kyle Shanahan and his shenanigans. Uh, it's just like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Let's look at uh, the fact that they, again, sent a boatload of picks for Christian McCaffrey only to come out and feature Elijah Mitchell in his first game returning from injury. Um, and he looked fantastic. 18 carries, 89 rushing yards, uh, averaged almost five yards per carry. And he was the featured back in this game. Like what, what we do. Here's what we know. That Kyle Shanahan can be very fickle when it comes to the running back position, right? He also likes to use running backs by committee. And we also know that he likes Elijah Mitchell. Like, let's not forget that Elijah Mitchell had an awesome rookie season. Just because he was injured at the beginning of this year doesn't mean he's not an awesome player. I think this is going to hurt Christian McCaffrey going forward a little bit. I I, I don't know if Elijah Mitchell is going to be somebody that you want to start or play or anything like that. But... He's just a good football player that I don't think they want to keep off the field. It's weird though. Like it's, it's still super it weird. weird. Yes. I don't understand Kyle Shanahan's decision-making. Like he has this uh, perpetual need to invest draft picks, early ones in running backs only to 
more heavily utilized the guys that uh, he drafted later and didn't invest in. It's just yep. a weird, it's a weird vibe. But I think like the fact that we saw this usage immediately out of the gate in Elijah Mitchell's first game returning, I'm kind of thinking that like, yes, obviously this is going to be CMC's backfield. I don't want to get overreactionary here, but I do think that with this usage and if this is going to be the, the way this offense kind of rotates, Elijah Mitchell might be flex worthy on a week to week basis. And, you know, because of the system, he's going to have, you know, pretty relatively high upside. Yeah, this is just a backfield that's going to be frustrating because we thought with the Christian McCaffrey trade went down that he was just going to be the workhorse, and not the case. And now that Elijah Mitchell is healthy, he's going to get touches. We know Debo Samuel is going to get touches. George Kittle is going to get fed in the passing game. Uh, it's frustrating. Um, I got one more, one more big, big winner for you, or for me. What about Tony Pollard? Um, again, started in this game without Ezekiel Elliott. 22 carries, 115 yards of the touchdown. Also caught three passes for 13 yards. His last two games in which he has started, uh, four touchdowns, uh, 246 rushing yards, 29 receiving yards. Kate, he's been unbelievable anytime that he's gotten a chance to start. Uh, three in his three starts without Ezekiel Elliott, six touchdowns, averaging well over 120 yards per game. Obviously, the Cowboys aren't going to make Tony Pollard the, the workhorse back going forward, but I do think this is encouraging long term with Pollard being a free agent after the year. Whatever team he lands on, I feel really confident that he can be a workhorse back that's not going to wear down, that can continue to be explosive. I think Tony Pollard is still one of the more undervalued running backs uh, in Dynasty right now. I 100% agree. I love the explosive ability that he has to just, you know, break off a play, any given touch, he could go for eight to 10 yards. Like it, it doesn't really matter. So let's talk about the fact that uh, he is going to be a free agent in 2023. Uh, we've talked about it before. Can't imagine that the Cowboys can prioritize him as a, uh, a free agent signing. Uh, well, like they're, I, not. they're not going to apply the franchise tag, not with the way that they value Zeke. So Here's my plan, Marcus. Um, I, I have a lot of Tony Pollard exposure and in the leagues that I don't, what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait until we get the clearance from Ezekiel Elliott to come back into this offense, which will be uh, next week. It'll be next week. The, yeah. the rumor was that we were possibly going to see him. It sounds like he just needs uh, a little bit more time to get back up to a hundred percent. We know that as soon as he's back in this offense, he's going to get all the run. So that's the moment that I make my move to strike for Tony Pollard. I think he's a perfect trade target. And yep. uh, I mean, regardless of what state your dynasty team is in, honestly, like it, I, I could easily picture him, you know, getting a very big contract to be a featured running back. Yep. And I, I don't think he's going to cost you all that much, uh, especially considering the, uh, you know, the immediate concerns that as soon as Zeke comes back, that we're not going to get to see Tony Pollard unleashed anymore. Yep. Uh, well, one more guy that we should mention, and we actually talked about him a lot last week, so we don't have to spend a ton of time, but Justin Fields, I mean, Oh my God. He's 12. A freak. Of tw yeah. 12 of 20 as a passer, 167 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Uh, but again, 147 rushing yards, two touchdowns, four touchdowns in this game. I mean, okay, we're just getting to a point anymore where like the list of quarterbacks you absolutely have to start over Justin Fields is pretty small. It's it's quite a short list. Now, on the back of that, Marcus, I don't think anybody's questioning whether or not you need to start Justin Fields right now. What about Cole Komet? Like if you have Cole Komet and Kyle Pitts, he's got three straight weeks. He's got five touchdowns over the last three weeks. Like he's clearly starting to vibe yep. with Justin Fields. Now, if you have Kyle Pitts and Cole Komet, which based on, uh, you know, the, the construct of your dynasty leagues is very much a possibility. I, I don't really think there's a question mark about who you're starting it, moving forward, at least no, for the time not. being. No, you're no. starting Cole Komet until things change. You're, you're obviously not moving Kyle Pitts. You're not selling low. 
you're just waiting for the quarterback situation to change. But right now, kind of going forward, yeah, it's it's there's no shame in starting Cole Komet over Kyle Pitts and just waiting things out. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough sledding, but Justin Fields, there are only two quarterbacks right now that have scored more fantasy points than Justin Fields. That's Patrick Mahomes and that is Josh Allen. And yep. that's just a testament to uh, what we're seeing out of Justin Fields right now. Uh, the rushing production is absolutely unmatched. They're starting to starting to figure out that formula. So excellent job for Justin Fields. But we can't be all positive here, Marcus. No, we've we, got to we've got to bring down the house a little bit. I think. I mean, I listen. I'm in the mood to bring down the house right now. I'm just so Woo! depressed. But let's uh let's uh do a, a a quick read for uh Price Picks, one of our absolute favorite daily fantasy sites. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Price Pick projection, you can win, and you can win up to ten times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. All these sports I'm going to start watching instead of the Dallas Cowboys because they make me mad. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Currently operational in 30 states and in Canada. Download the Prize Pick app or go to PrizePicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, they'll give you $100. You deposit $50, they'll give you $50. It's really that easy. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Kate, biggest loser of week 10 was. Clyde Edwards Alaire. Yes. You win, Marcus. Yes. You win, Marcus. That's who I um, had as well. He's not he's still not droppable for me. I'm just I'm holding. Uh, I might even send some offers because after what we saw, Marcus, he had four total offensive snaps yep. in this game. I, I don't know what he did uh to Andy Reid. I'm I'm not here to uh to confer. I'm not here to uh talk on any of that, but Seems like he peed in his Cheerios at some point or another. He's seen a decrease in offensive snaps uh, and offensive snap share every single week since week four. Um, this is not good. And he's all but been eliminated from this offense. Um, what do you make of this, Marcus? Like, I, what do we do? Uh, I know you're willing to drop him, but like, I, I I don't think you can drop him. I just don't. I like I I can't understand. I mean, to start the season, Marcus, like first four weeks of the year, when the Isaiah Pacheco rumors were still kind of swirling, he was averaging five yards per rush attempt. Like outside of that mm -hmm. uh, week three disappointment where he had seven rush attempts for zero yards. My God, uh, like he's overall been like pretty decent he was scoring a lot of touchdowns like i don't think he is uh i don't know what to do but I think i'm he, he needs a change of scenery right it's just not going to happen in kansas city he here's what to me was the the most concerning thing that i saw on sunday from this game isaiah pacheco had a really bad fumble early in this game that gave jacksonville the ball in Kansas City territory, I mean, it was a terrible, terrible fumble. And Andy Reid went back to Pacheco. That tells me that it's not close between Pacheco and Clyde Edwards Slayer because we have seen other coaches. Okay, hey, Pacheco, you're sitting on the, you're a seventh round rookie. You're sitting on the bench the rest of the game. Let's bring in the first round pick because we know he's not going to fumble. That's not the case. They actually gave him more work after the fumble, which to me tells me that they really like him. They still like Jarek McKinnon and all the kind of stuff that he can do as a receiver. It's just not going to happen for Clyde in Kansas city, but with the way that his rookie contract is structured, he's going to be there probably another year unless he's cut out. Right. And if he's cut out, right. I'm even less optimistic that things are going to work out. So it, I wouldn't be afraid of cutting him and having him come back to bite me. I just, I just don't see that happening. 
Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not like, like I said, I would be willing to send a, probably a third round pick plus something for Clyde Edwards Alaire, which doesn't feel like a lot, but it still does at the same time. Yep. Um, I'm willing to trade for him in the hopes that a change of scenery is just kind of what this team uh, or, or what Clyde Edwards Alaire needs. Uh, I've talked about it before. I do think the fact that he's a former first round pick uh, and we know he has so much upside. We know he is a very capable receiver. Um, I'm hoping that all of that is going to get him a little bit more uh, uh, of a longer leash in terms of sure. uh, getting those extra chances. But yikes, Marcus. I, I got another one for you. Another running back. Um, actually, another former LSU first round running back. How about Leonard Fournette? Now, Fournette did have 14 carries for 57 yards and a touchdown. So if you started him this week, um, whatever, you got RB2 production. It's not a big deal. What is concerning is that Fournette looked pretty slow, um, did not look great on the field, and then Rakad White, the the third round pick this year, got 22 carries, 105 yards, and looked explosive. And I just don't see any way, Kate, that for the rest of the season and beyond, that this isn't at least a time share in the backfield. So if you went out and you traded draft capital this year for Leonard Fournette, thinking you were going to get low end RB one production for the next year or so. I don't, I don't see that happening the rest of the year. I just don't. I a hundred percent agree. I mean, definitely the, the fact, like the fact of the matter is he just, he looks different, right? Like yes. even, even uh, the fact that this run game isn't efficient. And I think that's partly due to, you know, this offensive line and their, their other struggles there. Like, Point blank, Rashad White looks better. Like he's running behind the same offense. He's running behind the same offensive line. And I, I think that this team is starting to uh, open up their minds a little bit to the idea that, okay, maybe, maybe this is time to see that change in the guard. We're seeing that reflected in the snap share. I, I, I think it's going to be hard to trust Leonard Fournette on in, any given week, but uh, you also know the upside's quite high. So I think both of these guys can just kind of sit in your flex moving forward. And if you're uh, trying to decide if you say you own both, I, I'm, I'm probably going to play Rashad white over Leonard Fournette probably. just based on the way these two are looking. It looks like Leonard Fournette's like running through mud half of the yeah. time. And we should also mention that he has a hip injury kind of coming out of this game. Yep. I believe Tampa Bay is on by next week. I'll have to double check that, but we'll see. Um, I just haven't been all that encouraged watching Lenny this year play. I just think he looks slow. And I know maybe some of that's because he came into training camp overweight and he's just had a hard time shedding that weight and getting his explosiveness back. Maybe it's just because he's his body has had a ton of wear and tear on it going back to his days at LSU, but it's pretty clear who is the more explosive and more dynamic player in this backfield. Any other losers that we want to shout out before we, we go? I, I think that covers my yeah. list, Marcus. I, I uh, Maybe as a uh, uh, ancillary note, we don't really have any news yet, so again, don't want to speculate, but Cooper Cup yeah. uh, suffered yeah. a nasty-looking leg ankle injury. Not totally sure. Sounds like he avoided the worst-case scenario, which I think was a break. Uh, but still has to go, undergo testing as of Monday. So we'll see what, what happens there. But regardless, this offense is, uh, this Rams offense is just in absolute shambles. It's not like you're, you're going to run to the waiver wire and, uh, or, or, you know, run to your trade mates and send out offers for the other pieces. Brad in this offense. Or Allen Robinson or Tutu yeah. Atwell or Brandon Powell or it's, yeah, it's it's pretty gross right now. Uh, just cowboy fans as losers today. That's that's all. We we yep. just have to sulk for the next. <laughs> next day. Uh, all right, that is it for today's show. Thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Matt and Ryan will be back on Tuesday and Wednesday. Kate, you and I back on Thursday and Friday. I will try my best to be in a better mood. We'll, we'll see. Try. Uh, <laughs> until then, you can follow Kate on Twitter at FFBallBlast. I am at Marcus underscore Mosier. Enjoy your week. We'll see you guys right back here tomorrow.